country. Notwithstanding a few disagreements on governance in the post-independence era. But the idealistic objective of the LTTE to create a separate homeland for the Tamil was flawed at its inception, as they were not the sole representatives of Tamil destiny, and ethnic separation had no place in the region. The killing of every prominent Tamil politician seeking a democratic solution with regard to Tamil issues and elimination of other moderate groups are the best examples of the sadistic psyche of Prabhakaran, who could not be convinced of the path of peaceful negotiations. Failure of all peace negotiations initiated by successive Sri Lankan governments due to the intransigence of Prabhakaran further ex exacerbated the problem. Further, though elements of Tamil diaspora living in foreign lands and West Western lobbyists of Tamils in Western world always highlight the discrimination of Tamils. None of the groups mention that Tamils live peacefully with other communities in other provinces of the country. The terrorism trail initiated and ultimately lost by the liberation tigers of Tamil Elam has left many citizens of the country with deep scars, both physical and mental, which has created the social and economic retardation of the nation. At this juncture, let us quickly remind ourselves of events that led to the conduct of humanitarian operations. After, even after the signing of the ceasefire agreement in February 2002, the LTT continued with its ulterior military and political agenda for establishing a separate state. Civilians who did not support the LTT and differed in thought became victims of their brutalism, heavy taxes and penalties. Every family was forced to hand over one child to the organization. Further, recruiting of underage children was rampant despite international pressure and schools were used to promote recruitment. The LTT went on a killing spree by eliminating Tamil, Muslim and Sinhala political opponents and intelligence operatives of the security forces. Further, the LTT deployed its suicidal cadres to assassinate VIPs and high-ranking military officers. Concerted attempts to purchase aircrafts and improvement of related infrastructure facilities, developing the Sea Tiger fighting capability to an alarming level, acquisition of large quantities of artillery and other high-tech heavy weapons, a massive recruitment drive backed by propaganda campaigns and worldwide fund Racing activities were not only mere violations of the ceasefire agreement, but also confirmed that the fact that the LTT was preparing for military operations. In spite of many rulings by the Sri Lankan monitoring mission on violations of ceasefire agreement, the LTT continued to threaten military establishments in the East. Most importantly, the security of the Trincomalee Harbour with the construction of new defenses in Sampur. After the presidential elections in November 2005, the LTT openly displayed hostility towards new political and military leadership by attacking very sensitive military targets and VVIPs. It was evident that the LTT had perceived the peace tolerance attitude of a majority of Sri Lankans as a weakness. On 21st July 2006, the LTT closed the sluice gates of Marvel Aru in the eastern province and severed the water supply to approximately 20,000 villages and 14,000 acres of paddy land, causing grave damage to cultivations during the pre-harvest period. When several attempts to resolve the issue with the LTT 
through ICRC failed and having no other options left, the government was compelled to launch a military operation to regain the control of Marvel Aru sluice on humanitarian grounds. After a series of, of successive humanitarian operations led by the army, terrorism was eradicated from the eastern province by August 2007. The humanitarian launch the humanitarian operations launched by the army in one way after liberating the east spread subsequently to other areas of the one and the north where innocent civilians were held captive by the LTTE. The terrorists were gradually challenged and defeated by the army with the assistance of other forces while captured in their strongholds in succession. The final phase of humanitarian campaign culminated with the conduct of the world's largest rescue operation at Pudumathalan and the killing of the LTT leader, Velupulle Prabhakaran, along with the upper rank leadership. This brought to an end to almost 30 years of terror and devastation, which had strangled the freedom of the nation. With his death, the conflict that the Sri Lankan security forces waged for over 30 years was finally concluded in a relentless campaign conducted over a period of three years. And with it concluded the history of the world's most ruthless and dangerous terrorist organization, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nilam. M. Is to share the experience of humanitarian operations conducted in both eastern and northern theaters of operation. Sequence of the unfolding is as shown on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now introduce Major General Chagi Galage, RWP, RSP, USP, who will cover the operations in the East. Major General Chagi Galage joined the Sri Lanka Army in 1984 and was commissioned to the Gajabar Regiment in 1985. In an illustrious military career of 27 years, he has held many key, key command, staff and instructor appointments. Presently, he holds the appointment of commander, the president's guard, and is the colonel of the regiment, the commandos. In operations conducted against the LTT, he immensely contributed to almost all operations at various levels of command and was instrumental in defeating the LTT as the overall operational command of security forces in Eastern human, human operations. Major Nagalage has followed many local and overseas training courses during his military career and holds a diploma in senior level defense management from the University of Indore, India. During his outstanding career, he has been decorated with gallantry medals of Rana Vikrama and Rana Sura for his bravery in the battle. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Galagay. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me at the outset put you across the immediate background to the humanitarian launch of the humanitarian military thrust and also familiarize with you with the battlefront. The so called Tigers of Tamil Ilam to resume hostilities with the government of Sri Lanka by commencing military operations in East by no means surprising. 
previous post conflicts such as Elam 2 and 3 to began in the eastern province. The volatile nature of the eastern 